Hi, everybody. This is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor, with BCI podcast number 45, titled Implied Volatility and Expected Price move- Movement of Our Stocks During the Life of a Contract. We're going to analyze the significance of IV stats. Now, implied volatility is very important to those of us that are selling options because the volatility of the underlying security will determine what our premiums are and how risky our trades are. So generally speaking, the higher the implied volatility, the greater the premium generated, but also the greater the risk we incur with our option selling trades. But there are some misconceptions about IV statistics that I want to clear up in this podcast. So uh, let's start off by uh, discussing what exactly is implied volatility. Well, the true definition is that it's a forecast of the underlying stock's volatility as implied by the option prices in the marketplace. So there are different formulas that are used to determine what the market's expectation is of the volatility or the price movement of the underlying security, but it doesn't give direction. Now, that differs from historical volatility, which is based on the actual price fluctuation as observed over a specific period of time. Now, IV stats are based on one standard deviation. That means that it's expected to be accurate 68% of the time. So although IV stats are critical to option selling, it's not one statistic that we should hang our hat on. Now, generally speaking, IV stats are based on a one-year time frame. And once again, it does not reflect direction, just degree. So high IV means greater premiums, but higher risk. Now, determining which IVs are appropriate for a particular investor, that depends on the investor's goals and personal risk tolerance. Now, the blue collar investor started including implied volatility statistics in its exchange traded fund reports several years ago because a lot of retail investors just made the assumption that exchange traded funds were conservative, safe investments. And generally speaking, that is true because they are baskets of stocks, some going up, some going down. So, as in a security in its entirety, Generally speaking, there's less implied volatility with ETFs than there are with individual securities, but there are exceptions. For example, in a report in uh, mid-2020, the implied volatility of the S&P 500 was 27.89%. Now, at that very same time, the implied volatility of Vanek Vector Jr. gold miners, ticker symbol GDXJ, was 50.66, nearly double that of the S&P 500. So that just goes to show you that although ETFs, generally speaking, have uh, lower implied volatility than individual stocks, there are exceptions to the rule. And that's the reason why we started including these stats into our ETF reports so the investor can make a determination as to whether or not that particular ETF is appropriate for that investor's particular trading star. Now let's look at GDXJ at the time that I was referring to uh, with the implied volatility over 50. At the time, GDXJ was trading at 53.89. The implied volatility, once again, 50.66. So that means that the expected one-year trading range is from 23.36 to 77.96, 68% of the time based on one standard deviation. Now, in this particular case, when I'm giving you these stats, there were 20 days left to the uh, one-month contract expiration. So the IV stats are based on one year. So is there a formula? that will tell us what the expected price movement is over the next 20 day time frame, And the answer is yes. Now folks, I'm gonna give you that formula. You do not have to 
memorize it. Okay, what's important here is to know that the IV stats that we're generally looking at are based on one year and one standard deviation. But we're going to go through this uh, process anyway. So the way to determine the price movement that's anticipated based on option pricing in the marketplace at that point in time was to multiply the stock price times the annualized implied volatility, 5066 in this case. But then to bring it into the time frame of 20 days, we must then multiply that figure by the square root of the number of days to expiration, 20 in this case, divided by 365. And that will give us the one standard deviation uh, statistic. In this particular case, the price of the stock was 53.89. The implied volatility for the one year was 50.66. 50, 50 and if you multiply that by the square root of 20 divided by 365, that factor is 0.234%. Again, you don't have to remember this. Just remember the general concept that implied volatility stats are based on one year and one standard deviation. In any case, that number came out to $6.39. So the answer is for the 20 days remaining in the contract, the implied volatility is telling us that the expectation is GDXJ to trade between 47.50 and 60.28, $6.39 in either direction from the current market value of 53.89. And again, that is expected to be true 68% of the time. And that is what implied volatility means to us. So to summarize, implied volatility stats are generally framed in annual projections and based on one standard deviation, does not give direction up or down. To calculate the projected price movement during the life of the contract, in this case it was 20 days, a formula can be utilized which will identify a 68% percent chance of that more restricted range. So, um, that's basically uh, what implied volatility is, what it means to us, and how it applies to our option contract timeframes. Now, as a reminder to uh, all of you listening to this podcast, if you go to our website, thebluecollarinvestor.com, we have a free resources link on the top black bar where you can uh, download for free the Elman Calculator, a uh, single column put calculator, many other free resources. There's also uh, hundreds of journal articles I've written on option selling. Uh, the blog page will give you an opportunity to sign up for our free newsletter and so much more uh, to take advantage of. In our store, we have books and DVDs, um, online streaming DVDs, that is, ebooks, uh, trade planners, calculator spreadsheets, online mentoring, and a lot of information available to you to help us master these option selling strategies. So ladies and gentlemen, I wanna thank you for taking the time to listen to this BCI podcast number 45, implied volatility and expected price movement of our stocks during the life of a contract. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and most importantly, I hope it benefits you. As always, this is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor. Take care, everybody.